happen let us discuss this example in this example we have a function d which is defined on set r which is defined in this way its value is 0 when x and y both of them are equal and its value is mod x plus mod y when x and y are different we have to prove that d is a metric on r that means simply we have to prove that this d satisfies all those four conditions what is the first condition that it should be non-negative so let us prove the first condition so first okay i am taking two uh, points x y belongs to r so clearly we can write clearly mod x greater than or equal to 0 mod y greater than or equal to 0 you know that when we apply mod your value cannot be negative getting so that's why both of them are greater than or equal to 0 let us add them so we will have mod x plus mod y this is greater than or equal to 0 that means this one is greater than or equal to 0 and the second definition of d of x y is 0 so that means either we get 0 or some value which is greater than or equal to 0 that means we never get negative value so therefore i can declare therefore by definition we can write by definition d of x y greater than or equal to 0 for all x y belongs to r in this way we proved our d satisfies the first condition let us go for the second condition the second condition is d of x y is equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to y see we cannot prove it directly okay what will we do we will consider first x is equal to y and let us see what will happen second condition for x y belongs to r if x is equal to y see if x is equal to y definition says d of x y is equal to 0 so d of x y is equal to 0 by definition we could write it getting so that means half part we have done see what we have to prove d of x y is equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to y out of that one part we assume x is equal to y and we proved d of x y is equal to 0 now we have to assume d of x y is equal to 0 and we have to prove that x is equal to y if d of x y is equal to 0 okay d of x y is equal to 0 i have assumed okay let me mention here consider now consider i should write now consider d of x y is equal to 0 and we have to prove that x is equal to y see if x is equal to y then nothing to prove nothing to prove that means if we assume d of x y is equal to 0 and fortunately we get x is equal to y then there is nothing to prove the problem will create when we get x is not equal to y let us see what will happen if x is not equal to y so if x is not equal to y then let us see what will happen then we know that if x is not equal to y the definition of d of x y is mod x plus mod y right so that means in, in second case if we get x is not equal to y the definition of d should be this one but see already we have assumed d of x y is equal to 0 so that value i can put there so therefore mod x plus mod y is equal to 0 since we have already assumed d of x y is equal to 0 we are adding to non-negative non numbers and their sum is 0 that means each of them must be 0 so therefore mod x must be 0 and mod y must be 0 so mod of any number is 0 that means that number must be 0 so that number should be 0 so therefore x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 both of them are 0 so can we say x is equal to y actually we are starting with x is not equal to y and finally we are getting x is equal to y it contradicts okay so that means we are getting contradiction let me mention that thing here so it is not possible okay so therefore x is not equal to y is not possible okay so that means when you have d of x y is equal to 0 we have only one possibility that is x is equal to y getting so d of x y is equal to i should mention that thing here but uh, there is no more space to write so make a screenshot of it after that we will go further so therefore i wrote the conclusion if d of x y is equal to 0 x is equal to y 
That means first we assume x is equal to y, we proved d of x, y is equal to 0. And now by assuming d of x, y is equal to 0, we proved x is equal to y. So therefore, we conclude, let me write here. So therefore, therefore we can write d of x, y is equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to y. So in this way, we proved the second condition also. Let us go for the third condition. What is third condition? Let me write it here. So the third condition, uh, I'm taking two points, x, y belongs to R. So the third condition is symmetry. That means we have to prove d of x, y is equal to d of y. So let us start to prove. I'm considering d of x, y. Consider d of x, y. Okay. I'm simply uh, putting the definition. I'm keeping the definition here. Okay. So d of x, y. What is this definition? It is zero if x is equal to y and it is a uh, mod x plus mod y if x is not equal to y okay so this is equal to zero i am doing some modifications there huh? if if x is equal to y that is uh, same as y is equal to x so the same thing we can write in this way y is equal to x right mod x plus mod y that is same as mod y plus mod x since a plus b is same as b plus a so therefore we can write mod y plus mod x if x is not equal to y that means y is not equal to x so that's why we can write y is not equal to x okay so this is equal to see uh, this is same as d of y x since at a place of x we have got y and at a place of y we have got x so that means simply we have interchange x and y so we can call it as d of y x so we started with d of x y finally we got d of y x. so therefore we can say yes d satisfies third condition also let us go for the last condition triangle inequality make a screenshot of it then we will go further so let us discuss the last condition that is triangle inequality so for triangle inequality we require three elements so i have taken x y z belongs to r I'm going to discuss five cases here, just like we have already done for discrete matrix space. Same thing I'm going to do here. So the first case is all three elements are same, equal. Okay. So let me write here case number one. X is equal to Y is equal to Z. Let us see what will happen. So I'm starting with D of XZ. Okay. Just a minute. D of XZ. See X and Z are same. So that's why definition says its value is zero. So 0 is nothing but 0 plus 0 doesn't matter. 0 plus 0 is 0 again. But see 0 is nothing but it is not only 0. It is d of x plus y. Since x and y are same equal getting and if they are equal value is 0. So that's why we can replace this, this 0 by d of x comma y. Plus we can replace this 0 by y comma z. Since again y and z are same getting y and z are same. So yes uh, I should write. So y and z are same. So d of y comma z is nothing but zero. So what is our conclusion? We get equality here. D of x z is equal to d of x comma y plus d of y comma z. So we get equality. It's okay. So we should have less than or equal to. Okay. But in this case, we have got equality. We will go for the second case now. So case number two. Case number two. What is my second case? I will consider x is not equal to y, but y is equal to z. Let us see what will happen. I will start with left hand side d of xz. What is value of d of xz? As you can see here, y and z are equal, but x is different from this two. Get it? So x is different from z. So that's why d of xz, I should follow the second definition since the x and z are unequal. So that's why I should write here mod x plus mod z, right? Let me continue it here. So this is equal to mod x plus mod y we can write since z is equal to y getting so you can easily replace z by y since both of them are equal. So this is equal to I can write mod x plus mod y plus 0 doesn't matter if you add 0 you will have the same value. So this is equal to mod x plus y mod y that is nothing but d of x y. Okay, since x and y are unequal, no, so d of x, y is equal to mod x plus mod y. So I replace them by d of x, y plus zero. I can replace it by d of y, z since y and z are equal. So d of y, z is zero. So I'm replacing zero by d of y, z. 
we started with d of x z we have got equality everywhere and again we get the last that right hand side d of x y plus d of y z that means in second case also we get equality let us go for the third case case number three case number three is x is equal to y but y is not equal to z let us see what will happen obviously i should start with left hand side that means d of x z okay d of x z what i should do okay x is not equal to z right x is not equal to z so that's why i should follow the second definition the definition says this is mod x plus mod z since x and z are unequal but did you notice x and y are same both of them are equal so we can replace x by y so this is equal to mod y plus mod z okay since x and y are equal so we can write it as 0 plus mod y plus mod z doesn't matter if you add 0 you will have the same value but see 0 we can replace by d of x y since uh, x and y are same getting both of them are equal so distance between x and y is 0 and mod y plus mod z that is nothing but d of y z since y and z are unequal so that's why i should follow the second definition and second definition said mod x plus mod z okay that is nothing but d of y z so we started with d of x y we have got equality everywhere and we have got that right hand side that means in th third case also we got equality let us see what will happen in remaining two cases make a screenshot of it first then we will go further see the case number fourth is x and z that means first and last number are same middle one is different that's why i wrote in this way x is equal to z which is not equal to y let us see what will happen d of x z both of them are same so value is zero so zero is obviously less than mod x plus mod y plus mod y plus mod z okay so all of them are greater than or equal to zero so they can obviously all of them will be greater than zero getting so see what will happen so this is equal to we can write it as d of x y as you can see x and y are unequal see i should follow the second definition so d of x y is nothing but mod x plus mod y plus mod y plus mod z that is nothing but d of y z getting d of y z because y and z are unequal so d of y z that is nothing but mod y plus mod z so that's why i could write it so i started with d of x z and finally we got this is strictly less than so that means uh yeah strictly less than is accepted getting strictly less than or equal to that is accepted so we have got strictly less than let us go for the fifth case that is uh, can you guess the last case case number five it is uh, x is not equal to y is not equal to z that means all three numbers are distinct let us see what will happen see all these numbers are distinct obviously we should follow the second definition only there is no chance of using first definition since all of them are unequal let us follow the second definition only so let therefore okay then d of x z what i should write this is equal to mod x plus mod z so this is less than or equal to mod x plus mod y plus mod y plus mod z right See, I'm adding something. So obviously, which is greater than or equal to, we will get. Well, we are adding non-negative number. If y is 0, we will have 0 here. We will have equality. But if y is not 0, definitely it will be positive since we, are, we have applied mod there. Okay, so let us go further. So this is equal to d of xy plus d of yz. Since I have told you earlier, that is uh, all these numbers are unequal so that's why we have to use second definition only right this is second definition so say, using second definition we can say this is d of xy and this is d of yz so d of xz is less than or equal to d of xy plus d of yz that means if you consider all five cases we get d of xz is less than or equal to d of xy so let me mention that thing here so let me write here so therefore from all five cases all five cases what can we write d of xz is less than or equal to d of xy plus d of yz for all xyz belongs to r see that means d satisfies the last condition triangle inequalities also so d satisfies all four conditions so that's why we can declare yes d is metric on r let me mention so therefore d satisfies all four conditions satisfies all 
four conditions. So therefore, we can declare. Therefore, D is metric on R. So in this way, we proved. Yes. Okay. Make a screenshot of it. Then we will stop. Thank you. Bye bye.